Kingdom of Mutaapa, published November the 16th, 2017. Special characters are denoted as follows. And denotes left and right parentheses. The Kingdom of Mutapa, sometimes referred to as the Mutapa Empire, when Mutara, Shona, Mwindwi Mutapa, or more commonly and modern, Munhu Mutapa, in Portuguese, Minomotapa, was a Kalanga kingdom which stretched from the Zambezi through the Limpopo rivers to the Indian Ocean in southern Africa, in what are the modern states of Zimbabwe, South Africa, Lesotho, Swaziland, Mozambique and parts of Namibia and Botswana, stretching well into modern Zambia. Its founders are descendants of the builders who constructed Great Zimbabwe. Part 1. Etymology. The Portuguese term Minomotopa is a direct transliteration of the African royal title Mwenomutapa, meaning Prince of the Realm. It is derived from a combination of two words, Mwin, meaning Prince, and Mutapa, meaning Realm. Over time the monarch's royal title came to be applied to the kingdom as a whole, and was used to denote the kingdom's territory on maps from the period. Part 2. History The origins of the ruling dynasty at Mutapa go back to some time in the first half of the 15th century. According to oral tradition, the first, Mwin, was a warrior prince named Nyat Simba Mutota from the Kingdom of Zimbabwe sent to find new sources of salt in the north. That's the first legend Prince Mutota found his salt among the Tavara, a Shona subdivision, who were prominent elephant hunters. The second says that there was hunger at the Kingdom of Zimbabwe. Mutota then escaped the hunger then found land. They were conquered. A capital was established 350 kilometers north of Great Zimbabwe at Zvongam by the Zambezi. Part 2. History. Chapter 1. Expansion. Mutota's successor, Mwenomuta Pumatope, extended this new kingdom into an empire encompassing most of the lands between Tavara and the Indian Ocean. This empire had achieved uniting a number of different peoples in southern Africa by building strong, well-trained armies and encouraging states to join voluntarily, offering membership in the Great Council of the Empire to any who joined without resistance. The Mwena Mutapa became very wealthy by exploiting copper from Chijurg and ivory from the Middles Ambisi. This expansion weakened the Tora Kingdom, the southern Shona state from which Mutota and his dynasty originated. Matopez armies overran the kingdom of the Manioka as well as the coastal kingdoms of Kitif and Midanda. By the time the Portuguese arrived on the coast of Mozambique, the Mutapa kingdom was the premier Shona state in the region. He raised a strong army which conquered the Dand area that is Tonga and Tavara. The empire had reached its full extent by the year 1480 a mere 50 years following its creation. Part 2. History. Chapter 2. Religion. The Emperor Mutope had left the empire with a well-organized religion with a powerful priesthood, something uncommon amongst African kingdoms outside of Egypt, Kush and Abyssinia. The religion of the Mutapa kingdom revolved around ritual consultation of spirits and of royal ancestors. Shrines were maintained within the capital by spirit mediums known as Mahondoro. The Mahondoro also served as oral historians recording the names and deeds of past kings. Part 2. History. Chapter 3. Portuguese Contact. The Portuguese dominated much of southeast Africa's coast, laying waste to Sofala and Kilwa, by 1515. Their main goal was to dominate the trade with India. However, they unwittingly became mere carriers for luxury goods between Mutapus subkingdoms and India. As the Portuguese settled along the coast, they made their way into the hinterland as Centineos, backwoodsmen. These Centineos lived alongside Swahili traders and even took up service among Shona kings as interpreters and political advisers. One such, Centineo, Antonio Fernandes, 
managed to travel through almost all the Shono kingdoms, including Mutapus Metropolitan District, between 1512 and 1516. The Portuguese finally entered into direct relations with the Muena Mutapa in the 1560s. They recorded a wealth of information about the Mutapa Kingdom as well as its predecessor, Great Zimbabwe. According to Swahili traders whose accounts were recorded by the Portuguese historian Joao de Barros, Great Zimbabwe was an ancient capital city built of stones of marvelous size without the use of mortar. And while the site was not within Mutapus borders, the Mwena Mutapa kept noblemen and some of his wives there. In 1569, King Sebastian of Portugal made a grant of arms to the Mwena Mutapa. These were blizened, gules between two arrows argent and African hobar wires bladed or handled argent the shield surmounted by a crown oriental. This was probably the first grant of arms to a native of southern Africa. However it is unlikely that these arms were ever actually used by the Mwena Mutapa. Chapter 3, Portuguese Contact, Section 1, The Accidental Crusade. In 1561, a Portuguese Jesuit missionary managed to make his way into the Muena Mutapus court and convert him to Christianity. This did not go well with the Muslim merchants in the capital, and they persuaded the king to kill the Jesuit only a few days after the former's baptism. This was all the excuse the Portuguese needed to penetrate the interior and take control of the gold mines and ivory routes. After a lengthy preparation, an expedition of 1,000 men under Francisco Barreto was launched in 1568. They managed to get as far as the Upper Zambezi, but local disease decimated the force. The Portuguese returned to their base in 1572 and took their frustrations out on the Swahili traders who they massacred. They replaced them with Portuguese and their half-African progeny who became praise arrows. Estate Holders Of the Lower Zambezi, Mutapa maintained a position of strength exacting a subsidy from each captain of Portuguese Mozambique that took the office. The Mwena Mutapa also levied a duty of 50% on all trade goods imported. Part 2. History Chapter 4, Decline and Collapse Mutapa proved invulnerable to attack and even economic manipulation due to the Mwena Mutapa's strong control over gold production. What posed the greatest threat was in fighting among different factions which led to opposing sides calling on the Portuguese for military aid. However, the Portuguese proved to be happy with the downfall of the Mutapan state. Chapter 4 Decline and Collapse. Section 1. Portuguese Control. In 1629 the Mwena Mutapa attempted to throw out the Portuguese. He failed and was overthrown, leading to the Portuguese installation of Mavurama and Philippe on the throne. Mutapa signed treaties making it a Portuguese vassal and seeding gold mines, but none of these concessions were ever put into effect. Mutapa remained nominally independent though practically a client state. All the while, Portugal increased control over much of Southeast Africa with the beginnings of a colonial system. Chapter 4, Decline and Collapse. Section 2, Loss of Prestige. Another problem for Mutapa was that its tributaries such as Kitiv, Medanda and Manioka ceased paying tribute. At the same time, a new kingdom under a Rosvi dynasty near Bawu was on the rise. All of this was hastened by Portugal retaining a presence on the coast and in the capital. At least one part of the 1629 treaty that was acted on was the provision allowing Portuguese settlement within Mutaapa. It also allowed the Praeros to establish fortified settlements across the kingdom. In 1663, the Praeros were able to depose Mwena Mutapa Siti Kazurika Musapa and put their own nominee, Kamha Ripasio Mukomb on the throne. Chapter 4, Decline and Collapse. Section 3, Butwa Invasion. By the 17th century, a dynasty of Rosvi pastoralists under the leadership of a Changamaya. King slash General. 
began transforming the Butwa kingdom into new regional power. The Rosvi not only originated from the Great Zimbabwe area, but still continued to build their towns in stone. They were also importing goods from the Portuguese without any regard for the Mwenamutapa. By the late 17th century, Changamaya Dumbo was actively challenging Mutapa. In 1684 his forces encountered and decisively defeated those of Mwenamutapa Kamharapasu Mukumpu just south of Mutapas metro district at the Battle of Mahungu. When Mukumpu died in 1692, a succession crisis erupted. The Portuguese backed one successor and Dumbo another. In support of his candidate, Changamaya Dumbo raised the Portuguese fair town of Dembarre next to the Mutapa capital and slaughtered the Portuguese traders and their entire following. From 1692 until 1694, Mwena Mutapa Nyakambira rules Mutapa independently. Nyakambira was later killed in battle with the Portuguese who then placed Nyamar and Ma and on the throne as their puppet. In 1695, Changamaya Dumbo overran the gold-producing kingdom of Manioka and took his army east and destroyed the Portuguese fair town of Masiquesi. This allowed him complete control of all gold-producing territory from Butwa to Manioka, supplanting Mutapa as the premier Shona kingdom in the region. Chapter 4, Decline and Collapse. Section 4, Shifting Rulers. It appears neither the Roswi nor the Portuguese could maintain control of the Mutapa state for very long, and it moved back and forth between the two throughout the 17th century. Far from a victim of conquest, the Mutapa rulers actually invited in foreign powers to bolster their rule. This included vassalage to Portuguese East Africa from 1629 to 1663 and vassalage to the Roswi Empire from 1663 until the Portuguese return in 1694. Portuguese control of Mutapa was maintained or at least represented by an armed garrison at the capital. In 1712, yet another carter of the throne invited the Roswi back to put him on the throne and kick out the Portuguese. This they did, and Mutapa again came under the control of the Roswi Empire. The new Wena Mutapa Samatambira and I am Handu I become their vassal, while the outgoing king was forced to retreat to Chitama in what is now Mozambique. Chapter 4, Decline and Collapse. Section 5, Independence and Move from Zimbabwe. The Roswi quickly lost interest in Mutapa as they sought to consolidate their position in the south. Mutapa regained its independence around 1720. By this time, the kingdom of Mutapa had lost nearly all of the Zimbabwe plateau to the Roswi Empire. In 1723, Nyam Handi moved his capital into the valley near the Portuguese trading settlement of Tet under Mnamutapa Nyartsusu. Upon his death in 1740, the young Demapan Zagutu took power. He sought Portuguese support and invited them back to Mutapa along with their garrison of armed men, but Mutapa remained independent. Part 2. History. Chapter 5. Collapse. The Mwena Mutapa died in 1759, sparking yet another civil war for the throne. This one was more destructive than its predecessors and Mutapa never recovered. The winners ended up governing an even more reduced land from Chidima. They used the title Mamboa Chidima and ruled independently of Portugal until 1917 when Mambo Chioko, the last king of the dynasty, was killed in battle against the Portuguese. Part 3. Mutapa as Ophir. The empire had another indirect side effect on the history of southern Africa. Gold from the empire inspired in Europeans a belief that Mwena Mutapa held the legendary mines of King Solomon, referred to in the Bible as Ophir. The belief that the mines were inside the Mwena Mutapa kingdom in southern Africa was one of the factors that led to the Portuguese exploration of the hinterland of Sofala in the 16th century, and this contributed to early development of Mozambique as the legend was widely used among the less educated populace to recruit colonists. Some documents suggest that most of the early colonists dreamed of finding the legendary city of gold in southern Africa, 
a belief mirroring the early South American colonial search for El Dorado and quite possibly inspired by it. Early trade in gold came to an end as the mines ran out, and the deterioration of the Motapa state eliminated the financial and political support for further developing sources of gold. This recording is a derivative work from Wikipedia. For more information, please visit www.frogcast.org.